As you close your physical eyes, begin to surrender your body fully to gravity. Release all the tension from your forehead and from between your brows. Relax your breathing. Jaw is slack and your tongue is soft. Arms are heavy and your core is relaxed. Hips are grounded and your legs are splayed out completely at ease. Take a moment to clear your mind, arriving at darkness. Now, as you open your mind's eye, you find yourself laying down in a soft bed. It is only the crack of dawn. The light in the room is still dim. You are nestled between two other people, and they are both still asleep. There is a big black cat purring atop your chest. His eyes are big and luminous, even in the dark. You scratch the sides of his tiny face, and he closes his eyes in pleasure. Lower down, you feel the weight of two arms crisscrossed over your torso. Two of your three partners have you in an embrace. There's a sleepy smile on your face, and you take another moment to savor this feeling of wholeness, reveling in the love and security. This is your favorite kind of sandwich. You need to get up, though. You have work to do. But you're not quite ready. You linger in this sweet energy for another moment. You draw in a deep and steady breath through the nose and exhale. As you begin to gently wiggle out from between the two of them, the black cat jumps off your chest and you manage to escape the embrace without disturbing anyone. Still asleep, their hands find each other in your absence and they draw in, gently collapsing into the gap that you'd left. You take a moment to admire them. They are beautiful, inside and out. A smile forms on your lips. Jealousy and ownership are feelings you overcame many lifetimes ago. Now, it simply warms your heart to know that they'll have each other while you're away. You are standing naked beside the bed, and you feel a breeze coming in through the open balcony doors across the room. As you walk towards the doors, you manifest a protective suit that covers your body from head to toe. You step out onto the balcony and reach the railing. Your home is one of many units in a residential airship, and there are other balconies flanking yours. You are high up, kilometers away from the ground. You peer over the railing. It is a clear morning, with no clouds obstructing your vision of the earth below. The surface of this planet is not stable. Violent earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and tsunamis wreak havoc below on a regular basis. You look up and around the sky, spotting several other massive airships, some of which you helped build. You are rare. You're one of the last creators. Your job is one of the most essential on this unsteady planet. You work with your power of manifestation to calm the surface and keep the crust from breaking apart completely. With both hands on the railing, you place a foot up in between them and lightly spring over the edge. You're in a free fall. You make yourself as streamlined as possible, an arrow shooting down to earth. You are approaching the ground rapidly, and then she folds beside you, free falling with you. Her long seafoam hair trails behind her in a wild blaze. It's too loud with the wind to talk, but you tilt your head towards her and give a quick nod of greeting. Her entire face cracks open with a smile, crinkling up her lilac eyes. The next moment, she reaches out, taking your hand in hers. She folds you both out of the air. Still holding hands, you reappear on the surface, hundreds of kilometers away from the airships. Like you, she is also rare, but with a different ability. This petite creature is one of the last Oru. Her ability is highly valued, and on some planets there are bounties on her head. She is able to fold herself and others with her through space and time instantly. She is from another planet in your galaxy, but it was destroyed long ago. She has been on regular assignments on yours for many years since. You make a very solid team. Several kilometers ahead, you spot the problem. Where the ground was flat only hours ago, now looms a massive volcano. Billows of dense, ashy smoke pour out, significantly blotting out the blue sky. 
Diffusing this eruption is going to take a lot of your energy. You open your palm out in front of you and create a little energy bean. You pop it into your mouth immediately. As you swallow it down, warmth and newfound strength spreads all the way through you. Next, you manifest a protective suit over the little oru beside you, as well as a heat-proof bungee cord that will keep you tethered together. Holding hands once again, you look at each other and nod. You're ready. The next instant, you're deep inside the volcano. You're standing in a small alcove together, just off the main conduit pipe close to the magma chamber, deep below. You have no idea how she does it, and the Oru's precise mathematical calculations never fail to astound you. Your suits are the only thing preventing you both from melting, and even they cannot withstand the extreme heat forever. You get to work fast. Your gaze becomes fixed on the conduit pipe, and you begin the process. Though you have experimented with various solutions over the years of your long life, you have found that the best method to stop these eruptions is to change the composition of the magma to a special absolute zero ice that you had invented years ago. The alcove begins to cool as the magma closest to you transforms. A sweat breaks across your brow as you alter the magma, taking the ice all the way up the conduit pipe as well as deep down into the reservoir. You begin to lean against the rocky wall closest to you, and the oru loops under your other arm in support. Finally, the entire channel and chamber are at absolute zero. You let out a breath you hadn't realized you were holding. You are completely spent and cannot transmute or manifest anything until you've completely recovered. Your knees begin to buckle in fatigue and the next moment you find yourself back on your balcony, fully collapsed on your hands and knees. The Oru leans over you, rubbing small circles between your shoulders in comfort. She knows you'll be all right after some rest and leaves you there with a wave. She keeps the suit on and she'll need it for her next mission. The Oru could just fold, but instead, she playfully dives off the balcony. She was, after all, the one who taught you the joy of free-falling. On your crawl inside, you release your suit and it fades off. Your black cat comes trotting towards you, chirruping and greeting. He weaves underneath your crawling form, excited that you're on the ground. Your partners are still sleeping, all spooned together. You clamber up the side of the bed and they make space for you without waking up. An arm wraps around you, drawing you in closer. You are the smallest spoon. Your work on this planet is never ending, but for the moment, you feel satisfied peaceful, and completely safe, you begin to drift back to sleep. Slowly, begin to tune into your physical body. Draw a little more awareness to your breathing. Begin to wiggle your fingers and toes. Start rolling out your wrists and your ankles. On your next inhalation, extend your arms up overhead and take a full body stretch like you're just waking up. Alternate between flexing the heels and pointing the toes. On your next exhalation, curl into a ball. Give yourself a little hug, maybe rock side to side if that feels right. And slowly drop to whichever side is calling to you. Using your arm as a cushion, Bring your knees in as close as feels good, flexing the backside open. Take several deep and even mindful breaths right here. And from here, it's your choice. Stay down resting or come up to seated. Thank you for your time and participation. Peace and love.